Attention investors, let's make you some money. Let's get into it. Hey, how you doing guys? Derek here from M1 Realty. I'm the broker owner, founder of the company. Started in 2014, just about 10 years ago, in a third floor office suite here in Ferndale, Michigan. It was just me and a laptop. Fast forward to today, We've got a storefront right at the corner of Nine and Woodward, the epicenter of downtown Ferndale. And I've got an all-star team of agents, whether you're looking to buy, sell, invest, rent, whatever you need, we've got you covered. We even do property management now. So I know I've done several videos like this in the past, and it's usually, you know, what will $250,000 get you in Metro Detroit? What will $400,000 get you? Things like that. So credit where credit is due, one of my investor clients who found me from this YouTube channel, I was showing them properties around town over the weekend, and uh, she said, hey, why don't you make a video on what $50,000 will get you in, in Detroit? So investors kind of know, have a little bit better idea of what they're gonna get into at certain price points around the city. So here we go, That's a, I think it's a fantastic idea, so I'm doing it, here we are. So what we're going to be looking at today is what $50,000 will buy you in Metro Detroit because there's a bit of a misconception that you can you can you know come into Detroit and get a move in ready tenant occupied cash flowing home for $50,000 and 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 I don't want it, to it's possible but it's it's kind of a unicorn home at, at that price point so realistically at the $50,000 price point, you're gonna get a solid house. You're gonna get a, you know, everything that, that you're gonna see today is a brick home. You're gonna get a, a, a brick home. Um, you know, I, I haven't gone and driven these blocks to look at, at, what the, at what the neighborhood looks like because that's, you know, one of the things that we do once we're, once we're seriously looking. But these are just examples from around the city. I've got a couple on the east side, a couple on the west side. Just so you know, what the house is going to look like kind of on the interior at that price point. These are all $50,000. That's really the only thing they all have in common. So let's take a look. And uh, as we go through, I'll kind of talk about things that I see in the, in the photos and, and, and things to look for in, in properties. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll, get, we'll do a whole series of these at different price points just so you can get an idea of what you're realistically going to be looking at spending uh, for a cash flowing rental property. And with the examples that we'll be uh, seeing here in a minute, these are all pretty close to being move-in ready, uh, you know, within reason. Some of them need a little bit more work than others, but you can see, you know, you're not too far away from having a cash flowing rental property at this price point. And if we go up a little bit, that's when we start finding the homes that are, you know, tenant occupied and and cash flowing and are just move-in ready. So um, let's get let's jump right into it and uh, and go from there. All right, so we've got what I think is a pretty good representation of what you're gonna get in this current market for $50,000. I know this last one here is 52,000, but it, you know that's just kind of semantics at this point. Uh, let's take a look on the map. I'll show you where we're at. So we've got uh, two over here on the west side. We've got two on the east side. So they're a pretty good representation of what you're gonna get in this price point. So let's go ahead and Start with this house here in Abington, 9335 Abington. That's listed by TJ Brisebois of S&P Realty. So thank you, uh, TJ, for letting us use your listing here. Um, so it's 1,020 square feet, built in 1939, three bed, one bath. So let's just go and take a close look at the photos here. So first off, you're going to see uh, this going to be a, a recurring theme with most of these homes it's in pretty good shape but there's a little bit of maintenance needed um you know you're typically for for exactly 50 grand you're not going to get something that is 100 percent just turnkey moving ready but it's going to be pretty close so on the exterior here if you're looking close notice we have um you know the front porch steps are a little bit crumbled that's pretty common in these um, in the homes of this age in this time period, you know the, the exterior brick when it's not insulated will break down over time. <clears throat> you know we've got the this tree probably could get trimmed back. Just little things like that. Nothing like crazy um, repair wise, but just little general deferred maintenance type things. Very common for this price point. 
And but other than that, it's a it's a nice, you know, appealing brick home, nice Cape Cod, and you know the area is not bad. That's uh, Greenfield, West Chicago area. It's pretty solid, pretty stable. But like anything in Detroit, it's block by block. You have to come and take a look at the block before you can really determine what the what the overall neighborhood looks like. But um, little side view here, so. Um, we're going to on ever like this is super super common. This is nothing, not anything bad about this house. This is just super common for homes in Detroit, homes of this style, not having downspot extenders. So back in the day, they used to just have these downspots that went underground, and um, over decades and decades, those things fill up with dirt and debris. And then what you have is when it rains, the, why they got rid of those is in the late fall when it rains and it turns to snow and ice the water will freeze coming up the downspout get into the gutter and then if the gutter is clogged it gets up under the shingles and then that's where ice dams come from so you'll start it'll start raining inside your house that's not what you want so what we do nowadays is just take uh you know 15 dollar downspout extender from home depot run it out six feet away from the house and you're good to go so the side of this porch looks good the porch cap looks pretty solid all the masonry that we can see from this photo looks pretty good too so so far nothing like crazy major with this house but then we get in you can kind of see what i'm talking about so like this wouldn't be a hundred percent turnkey i would probably do something with these floors i don't think they need to be well maybe this one i might refinish it although price point wise what you're going to get in rent i'd probably just throw carpet over this hardwood floor because that's going to be the the cheaper fix um you could of course refinish the wood floors but you know you don't want to like over improve the house either so uh on the interior you can see that's probably what this was it was ice dam back in the day that looks like it's a really old repair so that's nothing that's currently going on at the house again we're talking houses that are almost 100 years old so you know over over time thing things happen repairs get made um, you know, techniques improve over time. This could have been 50 years ago that they patched it, and that's just how it's been ever since. But in general, we got the nice cove ceilings, it's wet plaster walls, uh, we got the nice archways here that you don't see in current, you know, modern architecture. So, all in all, I mean, this is you're, you're, you're close to moving somebody into this house, but you're not exactly there. Uh, this is another angle of the living room, this is a little bit better view. Of that repair it's almost definitely an ice dam i mean you see those all the time um so we've got walking down the hallway here this is your typical cape cod bungalow living room on one side dining room kitchen then we're going to have like a bathroom two bedrooms in back uh actually a cape cod might have one bedroom in back and then two bedrooms upstairs we'll see but this would be bedroom now this is the dining room right here so um yeah you can see nice coved uh ceilings here um again they just have the the you know the form four dollar Home Depot light. You can you, again a, a rental property. I wouldn't go crazy extravagant, but you can go maybe a step nicer than that. That's you know pretty pretty typical here. Um, this looks like it might be a bedroom. I think this is a bedroom here. So again, just a little bit of plaster damage. Um, I don't even know that I'd worry about that. Now these windows are the original wood windows that belong to the house. So in Detroit, a big thing with the rental uh, inspections is lead paint. They might want these windows replaced. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, uh, a little bit further down the hallway, we got the uh, bathroom here. So it looks like they redid the flooring at one point in time. It looks just like maybe vinyl plank, but we've got the old Pepto-Bismol pink tiles. Uh, a couple things we can do with that. You can just leave it and, it, and most of the uh, most of the homes of the rental properties in this neighborhood of this vintage are going to have the original bathroom tile. I'd clean it up a little bit, like the grout's kind of dirty and gross, so I'd give that a, a, a polish. But all in all, you know, this is kind of what you're gonna what you're gonna get for these homes in this price point. Um, again, it's it's close to being moving ready, but it's not quite there. Um, you know, again, bath fixture. You know, I got to replace some of the some of the fixtures here reglaze the tub you know the things you can do pretty cheaply i wouldn't go crazy on this house the vanity looks fine i'd keep that and again just probably pro what they did here was they glazed that's weird they glazed this side of the wall and left the other side pink so 
who knows why they did that, but um, your call, what you want to do. You could reglaze the whole thing into one color, which is probably what I would recommend doing, or you could like go crazy and like pull this tile down or go over top of it or you know go subway tile. I don't know that I'd go to that extent for a house like this. Um, but, you know, all in all, functional bathroom looks relatively decent. It's not going to be anything that, that renters in the neighborhood are going to say, oh my God, that's disgusting. That's just what you get for, for these type of, well, for these type of bathrooms. So we did have some tile damage and they kind of went at it with, uh, with, with a couple different types of tile there. So I'm looking at this for the first time, just like you guys. So I want you to get my, my natural reaction here. So, um, yeah, I would probably, <laughs> um, God, I don't know, that's the trick. I'd probably just reglaze this whole thing and it's not going to look great, but it's also not going to cost a fortune to redo because, you know, time t time is money here. And you know, the, when, once you get this house, you're going to want to get a tenant in there as fast as possible. It's not like, so for something like this here, you're not going to redo this tile and be able to get an extra hundred bucks a month for it. You know, you're going to get the same rent regardless. So that's kind of my thinking on that. Um, yeah, again, window probably needs to be replaced. Um, but all in all, I mean the, the paint, I, and the, I, some of this paint you can, you don't have to even redo. It's, it's fine. Good enough. And so we got, looks like we got our upstairs bedrooms here. Um, so they're typically going to be about the same size. They're not going to be huge on a Cape Cod, they're, uh, you know, a thousand square foot, uh, Cape Cod. They're going to be like 10 by 10 or 11 by 11. So that's again, a couple, a little bit of plaster damage, nothing out of the ordinary. So when you got, obviously they painted, they slopped paint all over the floors. Um, that's why I think the cheaper way to go and probably the smarter way to go is just put some carpet down. Um, you know, that whole house, uh, my, my carpet guys could do that whole house for like 1500 bucks probably. So as opposed to probably. 3,500, four grand to, to redo the floors. And then who knows, you know, what they look like when the, when the tenants move out. So, you know, just a little bit of, you know, a few thousand dollars to get this place buttoned up and run it out. So, you know, like I said, you can pick up a house for 50 grand in Detroit and have it be close to rentable, but it's not going to be a hundred percent of the way there. Let's see what it is. We scroll through these photos. We've got a lot of these bedroom photos here. Uh, this looks like the dining room again. So they, it looks like they probably tried to restain the, the floor and just didn't know what they were doing. So, um, you know, it, it, it could be, it could be salvaged. I don't know that I'd salvage it cause it's going to be pretty expensive to, to sand everything down and, and then go again. Um, so again, blinds, the, the $7 blinds from Home Depot is all you really need for this house. You can even go like paper blinds, uh, to, and tell the, the tenant to put their own blinds in, but I, I typically will. We'll just put stuff in that looks nice. Doesn't have to be expensive. Um, you know, we got a mishmash of, you know, you got those glass tiles and a Formica countertop that looks like granite. And then you got some original cabinets here. Got some shaker cabinets there. It's up to you. You could improve that if you wanted to, but you certainly don't have to. As long as it's clean and functional and safe to, to, to use, that's usually all. Oh, you know, that's the standard that we would, we would go to, to, uh, you know, your, ten your tenant's going to be happy. Uh, if something breaks, as long as you fix it and they know that they can rely on you, you're going to have a, a good solid tenant for years to come. Um, as long as this fridge, <laughs> that's borderline. Not all of these homes are going to have power on. And I have learned the hard way, never open a fridge in a, in a vacant house. Um, that if you want to roll the dice, maybe you can salvage that fridge. It might, it might be perfectly good to go. I don't know. Or it could be a horror show when you open up the, the fridge. So that's, that's on you. Don't, don't, don't blame me if, uh, if that happens to you, this is where your stove is going to go right here. Um, and then, yeah, it looks like we're going to want to redo the flooring in the kitchen as well. looks like they maybe pulled up some old peel and stick tile or something like that. Um, my recommendation for bathrooms, kitchen, like pretty much anything, honestly, is vinyl plank, like luxury vinyl. It wears really well. It looks so much better than laminate. It's, you know, it's more waterproof, it's more durable and it's cheaper. So that's 100% the way, the way I'd go for this house. Um, so, and yeah, it, it, again, nothing, none of this stuff's going to cost an arm and a leg, but everything adds up when you're rehabbing a house and it adds up quick. So you have to really keep one eye on the budget 
uh, to make sure that you're getting it to the point where somebody's going to like live in there, but you're not like super over improving the house. Um, so let's see. Okay. So here's our upstairs. So we got, uh, yeah, these blinds just need to go. Um, let's go back here real quick. Cause that's this, this kind of craftsmanship right here. You just don't see that anymore. Like the, uh, you know, in a, in a $50,000 house. Cause when these houses were built, it was right. Actually, this was built during the war. So, uh, my rule of thumb is anything built in the thirties in Detroit is going to be a rock solid house because they could afford to hire the very best craftsmen to build it. Uh, cause it was the middle of the depression. So, um, you know, any houses that were built in the thirties generally are incredibly well built ar around here. So, um, you know, the ceiling looks maybe a little bit low, but, um, that, I think that might just be the perspective of the, where the photo was taken. So we probably have a, you, you need seven feet to be considered a bedroom and this obviously is. So I think we're good there. And again, this other bedroom has the same thing. You can use this as a walk-in closet. I've seen them use as office space, you can put a computer in there and have a nice view, like, whatever it's pretty you know a, a few different uses that you can that you can have for that little alcove area um but yeah just super cool they're really nice to really nice to have it's a, it's a nice layout um so we got looks like most of some of this block it's a, mi a mix of brick and looks like vinyl frame and brick so um we got vacant house or you know vacant lots next door there used to be houses there they got torn down so you know, the city as they come through and these houses go vacant, they'll tear them down just to stabilize the neighborhood. So, um, and you know, 15 years ago, um, you know, when the, when the, when the recession hit, like this would have been vacant, boarded up, just nasty neighborhood. And they, and it's, you know, most of these areas have come back pretty nicely. So again, these windows probably are going to need to go. Uh, so let's check out our basement here. So we got a little bit of moisture down here. Could just be, um, you know, when they, when they, uh, come and winterize these houses, they disconnect the meter and they always drip a little bit. So it could be that could be a foundation issue. We'd have to really get in and take a look. You can see the furnace is not in the house right now. That's not, again, nothing that I'm too worried about. A lot of times sellers will remove the furnace and the hot water heater, um, just to protect them until the house sells and then they'll put them back in at closing. Um, or it could just be gone. And that's something you can always write into the purchase agreement to, um, to, to have a furnace installed. And obviously you can't finance a house without a furnace. So the three things that you're going to need are, are a furnace, functional plumbing, and the roof can't have a tarp on it in order to finance a house. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, so we got a hot water heater, but it's an old one that's been disconnected. So that's good. We'll get rid of that and get a new one put in. Now this here, um, in, <laughs> so Probably back when this house was built, it had a gravity furnace, a big old octopus furnace. If you don't know what those look like, I'll, um, I'll, I'll try and add a photo here. Um, but uh, this could be a possible issue because this is probably wrapped in asbestos. So it's not the end of the world. You don't want to really remove it. What you do, they literally just take paper mache and cover it up. So... Um, you know, as long as it's not, it, it's only dangerous when it's friable, meaning that it's like coming, coming apart and that's when it's, you know, can get into your lungs and, and kill you. So we'll, you know, use, use precautions. Anytime you see something like this, it's more common in a house that has radiator heat from the, from the twenties and thirties than, um, than houses that have forced air. But when it was an old octopus furnace, a lot of times these were wrapped in asbestos, all the duct work. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and again, this looks like, this looks like it was intentionally removed because a lot of times you'll see that this ductwork will be all mangled when somebody just steals the furnace. So I think that's probably the case here. And there's actually the cover for the furnace. So, um, I think that's probably what's going on at this house. Um, but foundation walls look good. Um, you know, this, again, this house just needs, needs, needs a good once over, needs to be cleaned up and, and you can turn it right around and, and rent it. I don't see any like major cracks. It doesn't look like the... Um, foundation walls pushed in or anything like that. So I think we're, we're looking pretty solid here. Um, you know, it looks like this might even be a, might be PVC. I to tell if that's PVC or cast iron just from this photo. Um, but, uh, yeah, all in all, looks like a solid, solid house. I mean, um, you know, it, it, it's again, pretty close to moving ready. $50,000. Um, that works for me. So we got, do have a garage. Not all these houses are going to have garages. Uh, and not all the garages are going to be in very good condition, but, uh, you know, the side of the house here again, 
good deal. In fact, I've had a couple of uh, my a couple of my uh, investor clients as they're getting homeowners insurance on these houses. They're they're actually the insurance company is requiring them to tear the garage down, which you know we can do that for I think it was like twenty five hundred or three grand something like that. It's not super cost prohibitive. Um, okay, so we look get a little bit closer look at the this looks like the side of the house here. Got a little bit of a step crack right there, but it's been patched. Uh, looks like maybe they've kind of patched in some some brick here as well. This might have been like a coal shoot back in the day when the house was first built and they just bricked it in. That's probably what that is. And right here would be the milk door. Like back when they used to have a milkman, there used to be a door right there that he put the milk and then there'd be a door on the other side in the house where you get your milk. So that obviously is uh, the day, <laughs> days gone by. Don't have that anymore. So a lot of these houses, they'll either seal that up or just brick it up like they did here. So that's nothing, uh, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing that we haven't seen. Um, yeah, just power wash the outside. This thing's ready to go. Landscape it a little bit, and you got a, a good rental property. Um, kind of see our garage there. Um, the garage itself. So I'll take I'll take a second to. I, I won't I won't spend as much time on the rest of these houses, but I kind of want to talk about a couple things on this one. First thing I look for in these old garages is the slab. Cracks like this are no big deal, um, but you'll see some of these where. The, the the slab is just cracked and heaved and there's you know a couple inch gaps i mean it's it's um you know it's that's why some of these have to be torn down because there's never, there's not safe some of these can't be saved but this is what i like to see here got cross bracing in here so the garage isn't going to lean over and i can't really tell from here but what i look for here is like a double sill plate it's like just a double layer of two by fours that the rafters are the um yeah the rafters are resting on um it's a solidly built garage so um yeah for 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 a fifty thousand dollar house in detroit that's about as good as you you can expect so um yeah so that's that's that one that's the abington house let's move on to the next one all right so our next house here is 17351 eileen that's also on the west side um that's going to be like uh it's off of wyoming uh it's i think it's going to be south of seven mile um probably between i think it's between six and seven mile um, this one is listed by John Lambrecht from Lambrecht Realty. Thank you, John, for letting us use this. Uh, three bed, one and a half bath, 1,336 square feet, built in 1934. So again, um, you know, a well-built home from the 30s. That's what we like to see. Let's zoom in here. So you can see in, in this part of town, it's, there's, there's, these homes are really, have, have, some of these are really ornate. So just with these peaks. You got some stone inlay here. You got different brick. I mean, it's a really visually appealing home. Just really nice. So we'll see what the interior looks like. But when this is your 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 base that you're starting off of, it's it, it's pretty nice. Uh, I, I'm, you you can clean these up really nice and get a little bit more rent for them just because of where they're at and how they look. Um, so we're gonna see this one's probably never had like a full driveway. I think the city would be fine with this. Um, they might require this to be patched up a little bit here, but generally speaking, just this little two-track driveways are fine. Um, again, we're looking for things that we can do to come in, get it livable, get it safe, get it repaired, and not cost an arm and a leg. And if we had to rip this out and repave this whole driveway, you're looking at probably in this day and age, twelve or $15,000. That's probably more than you're gonna to wanna to spend. But the, the roof looks decent. Brickwork looks really good. Um, so we'll see what the interior looks like. And again, they're, they're boarded up. Don't, um, I wouldn't be concerned when you see houses that are boarded up. That's actually a good thing. They do that to protect the windows, protect the interior of the home. Usually they're boarded on the outside, but I'm, I'm fine with it boarded on the inside as well. So, uh, this kitchen looks a little bit more, uh, a, a little bit more put together than the, than the last house. Uh, obviously it has a floor, which is a good start. Um, and it's all one kind of contiguous uh, pattern here and the, and the cabinets look like they they all match so that's nice um no appliances in this one uh got our this probably is the this might be the living room either the living room or the dining room um probably the the living room and these old medallions i mean you can just imagine back in the day when this didn't have 30 million coats of paint on it and it was it was painted and, and inlaid and ornate and just there's the detail work on some of these Housing in Detroit is just, are, are just incredible. It's really nice. Uh, so this would just be a bedroom. Again, we got it boarded up for security right now. They have the the trim off there just to, to so they can board it up easier. But this wood floor looks a lot better. Uh, you know, there's not paint splotches all over it. 
the the room itself you're gonna want to probably slap a coat of paint on this and clean it and, and scrub it down a little bit just get it cleaned up you know again not something that's 100 percent moving ready but it's close and that's what we're gonna get in this price point um bedroom two same deal floors look decent uh walls look decent um, you're going to get like this, this stucco too, cause this stuff hides a bunch of, of uh, in, defects, things like that in, in the walls. So that's, that's not uncommon. That's kind of what people expect, uh, in the, in the area. So this will be our upstairs or our, our, our bungalow portion. This may or may not have hardwood floor under this carpet. Um, so you can, you're going to pull it up the carpet anyway, you, you roll the dice, you know, you might have beautiful pristine hardwood underneath or it could just be subfloor that you have to recarpet so i would budget for you know 750 800 bucks to recarpet uh got a couple of holes in the wall here that's as easy as patching up the plaster it's not that big of a deal and pepto-bismol bathroom again uh but you can see this one so this is a good example of you know they they added the flooring in that first house they put the like the vinyl flooring in this is probably why it's probably similar to, to, to this one where you got a couple tiles missing just enough that you're not going to get it to look the way that you'd want it to. So you're probably better off just like going over top of this flooring. Um, but this tile, it's, it's, you know, it'd be perfectly acceptable to leave it. And then this is our half bath, which probably is in the basement. Um, hard to tell from this photo, but this is uh, probably our... This might be our entryway here, but you can see this is like really nice uh, tile here, nice slate tile. Um, here's our basement. So again, we're looking at the foundation walls. I don't see anything just from this photo that leads me to believe that there's any issues foundation wise. Uh, again, hot water heater just chilling in the <laughs> in the middle of the of the uh, basement. This will be our unfinished attic space. Um, so that's you know that could easily be finished off as well. You just have to insulate it, put put up some drywall and you can finish that off. So again, really nice looking home. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, nothing that, uh, you know, you don't have to do too much to it to get it to get it turned around and rented. So this is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna look at house number three here, 11003 Mogul. That's gonna be over on the east side, 48224 zip. So it's kind of over by St. John's if you're familiar with St. John's Hospital, if you're familiar with that area. It's at Grayton and Kelly. So um, this one is only a two bed, two bed, one bath, uh, 904 square feet, been on the market 34 days, built 1939. And uh, Andre Hardy from Coldwell Banker has this one listed. So thank you, Andre, for letting us use this in the video. Appreciate it. So uh, we'll take a look here. Um, this area is most of these homes in this in this part of town are going to be brick, so it's going to be pretty consistent. There's gonna, there's a few frame houses interspersed throughout, but <clears throat> for the most part, we're going to be looking at brick. Looks like they put the downspot extenders here. Uh, the brickwork uh, again, you can see a little bit of deterioration in the porch. Just needs to be tuck pointed. Nothing crazy. Um, there's the, the two areas that are most common are the porch and the chimney first two things I look at and the roof looks decent it's, it looks like a three-dimensional shingle Th these are kind of hard to tell what kind of condition the roof is in until you get up and s inspect them and see how much granule is left on the roof but we've got our floor plan here um, but uh, yeah you know the chimney just from from this photo looks pretty solid and this one's on a corner lot too so you can see that I get the the sidewalk here you know, landscaping, I'd probably trim this guy up a little bit, but I'd definitely keep it in and, you know, just uh, kind of trim along the, the fence line as well. Again, just little things that need to be tightened up a little bit. But uh, interior wise, uh, it doesn't look bad. Uh, the, I think our, as we as we go here, our, our wood floors are looking better and better. That one I wouldn't really do much to. Uh, looks like we have an actual uh, wood fireplace here. Now for rental purposes, um, that's your call. I would probably cover that up. You can just take a kind of a decorative grate and, and cover that up, screw it in, tell the tenants they can't have, uh, fires in the fireplace. Um, you know, that's gonna, that's just to protect your investment. I've had a couple homes that had, have had fire damage and it's not fun to deal with for anybody involved, including the tenant. So, uh, if we can avoid that, I recommend it. Um, but the, the ceiling looks really good here. The walls look, you know, this is, look, that's just like a paint mark there. It's a different color paint, 
But in this room anyway, the, the plaster looks really good. And here it is from a different angle. A lot of windows, a lot of natural light in that house too, so that's pretty nice. Uh, this is probably a bedroom, I'm thinking. So again, you know, it just needs to be kind of spiffed up a little bit, but it's they just did a really bad job cutting in the, the paint here on the on the on the trim. But um, you know, it's all just cosmetic. And for whatever reason, maybe we had a bed there and they refinished around the bed. So that's not awesome, but uh, you know, that's why they why they invented carpet, I suppose. Uh, bathroom here, so they, the toilet's missing, the vanity's missing. Again, a toilet is, you can get a toilet for $99 at Home Depot and a vanity for about the same. So, and it has the tub surrounding here already. You got some uh, glass tile backsplash type stuff. I mean, for a couple hundred bucks, your bathroom's done and you don't have to do anything else to it. So that's nice. Kitchen, on the other hand, you're going to, you're going to be putting in a kitchen here on this one. So, um, you know, you can't, can't have everything at this price point. But, um, you know, uh, you don't have to go crazy on kitchen cabinets and a countertop. And, you know, the, you, uh, for Mike, a countertop is more than fine. Uh, or butcher block, something like that, where it's a, a few hundred bucks. <clears throat> Again, same deal. You don't have to go all out on cabinets. You can get, you can you literally go to, like, the um, Habitat for Humanity restore and find, um, find uh, cabinets that you can put in a countertop and a sink. So... Probably looking at a couple thousand dollars in the kitchen. Um, probably actually, by the time you add appliances, probably three grand, thirty-five, thirty-five hundred, four grand. You don't have to spend ten thousand dollars on this kitchen to get it up and running, though. And then in the basement, kind of what we've been looking at too. Um, this wow, the block looks block looks really great. And it's got PEX plumbing, so um, that's what we want to see. Uh, anybody that breaks into this house, they're going to see that it's PEX and keep on walking because that's not worth anything to, to steal. Um, but you can just see like the construction when these homes were built in the thirties. I mean, they just use this two by six decking. Everything on in this house was custom made, cut to fit right on site by master craftsmen. Uh, even looks like we got steel beams here. A lot of times in the Kind of surprised by that, actually. That was during World War II, and a lot of time, a lot of metal uh, was getting shipped over for the war. But it looks like they 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 managed to find some for this house. Uh, a lot of times, you'll have like wood wood beams and wood posts, but it doesn't look like we have that here. But these walls look really plumb. Um, yeah, this is just a nice, solid-looking home. And same deal, like furnace right here. Um, that's where it would go, um, even if it got stolen. Possibly, I don't know if it was stolen or if it was just taken out, but generally speaking, what we'll do is is just write it into the purchase agreement that the seller has to replace it. It's usually not a problem. Uh, nice, solid house. It's not bad at all. I like this one. All right, and then last but not least, we'll finish it up with 16050 Bringard, which is also over on the east side. It's a little bit further south of that uh, house on Mogul that we just looked at. But uh, this one's 52000 It is a three-bed, one-bath. Uh, 996 square feet. This one was built in 1942. So you're going to probably see a little bit different uh, construction style, but not anything significant. But we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at this one and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and see a little bit further what it looks like. This one's listed by Ben Ness and Alex Lauer from Clyde Realty. So thank you, Ben and uh, Alex. Great guys for, uh, for letting us use this one. It's been on the market 86 days. So let's check this one out. Um, again, so the brickwork on this one is actually, you know, it looks like this one's been patched. And it's hard to tell with these front porch steps here. They probably just need to be replaced. But those precast front porch steps aren't anything, you know, a couple hundred bucks a piece, tops, or probably even less than that. This is a really good looking roof. This roof looks relatively new here. These gutters just need to be cleaned a little bit. And just from this photo, looks like the chimney's in good shape as well. Front porch is in good shape too, and our downspots are extended, so we're a little bit ahead of the game for our extra two grand. Um, so this is going to be a, just kind of a, a repeat, looks like, of everything else we've seen uh, interior-wise. So, you know, again, you can clean up the, these wood floors. I'd probably just carpet over it if it was me. Uh, put in a little bit nicer light fixture, and you got yourself a living room. Um, so this is looks like the dining room right here, looking through into the kitchen. And, uh, yeah, so this would be the living room here. I think that's the dining room. So it's kind of flipped from, from how most of these houses are set up. Uh, most, of, most of the time the living room will be on the other side, but whatever, no big deal. Uh, bedroom one, again, 
You could possibly even just clean these walls up and be good to go. Although I'd probably slap a new coat of paint just to freshen it up a little bit. Um, wow, they, got, look, look, <laughs> they really like their uh, their pink bathrooms uh, back in the day here. But this one already has a glass block window, so you're you're good to go there. You're not going to have to replace that window. Uh, and all the all the tiles look like they're still intact too. So I just this literally bath this bathroom I literally just clean it up. You're 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 done. You don't have to really do anything else to it. Um, your call. This is the upstairs bedroom here. Um, you know you could probably get away with painting the ceiling. Although I might just go quarter inch drywall over it and and just kind of just just again just freshen it up a little bit. You don't have to go all out. You don't have to go crazy. And those are the only photos that we have for this one. So um, you know if you want to check it out, give me a call and we'll get you in there. But uh, that's, I think, a pretty good representation. There's four houses that are on different sides of the city, and they're all in relatively the same condition with relatively the same features um, for the same price point. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope that, you know, gave you a little bit better idea of what you're really going to get at, at, this, at this particular price point in this particular time, which is spring of 2024. So um, if you have any questions about any of the homes that we saw today, reach out to me. My direct line is 586-491-5622. You can also reach me at 248-561-6155. Shoot me an email, dwarenka at m1realty.net. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, I'm on it. Shoot me a DM, I'll respond quick. And special thanks again to all of the agents who let me use their listings. I mean, there was like literally in that price range between 50 and 55,000, there's something like 82 houses in, on the market in the city of Detroit right now. So kind of just took the best ones that I thought that were representative of the particular area that they're in and went with it. So thanks again, guys and ladies. And uh, thanks you so much for watching this, guys. I really appreciate it. And anybody else that wants to send me uh, an idea for, uh, for a video topic, send it my way, put it down in the comments, shoot me a text or uh, give me a phone call. Love to hear it. And uh, yeah, we'll get these videos made for you and turn right around to help you out. And that's what we're here for. So thanks again. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great one, guys. Thanks.